are you today? So in this video, I wanted to cover some cloth pad drying options. I thought this video would be helpful to someone who is new to pads and maybe isn't quite sure how to care for them or you need some ideas for how to dry them because you're a little bit stuck. I do want to apologize for the weird setup. We are in my living room. I did not have the best lighting anywhere else in my house. And that being said, there might be some cats running around because they like to eat whatever I'm doing. So I apologize for that too. Starting off, of course, you can always use your dryer if you have one of those available to you. Of course, always care for your pads via the recommended method the maker suggests. If drying with a dryer, always dry on low or medium. That's what I personally recommend, as drying on high can cause shrinkage or warping of your pads. Another option is a drying strap. I do not have one of those available to me right now, but these are really easy to make if you have a snap press. It's just a length of ribbon that has a snap on it so that you can snap it over a shower or closet rod or perhaps a clothes hanger. As well as that, it has a snap on the bottom for you to be able to snap a pad to it and then you can snap that wing to another pad and that wing to another pad and make a pad chain. Drying straps are really great for a travel option. If you are someone who travels a lot, they don't take up any room at all and you can just stuff them in your bag and hang them basically anywhere to dry. One of my favorite options is what I refer to as an octopus hanger. It is just a little hanger like this that has a bunch of arms and a bunch of clips on it and you can fold them up like this and store them so they don't take up too much room. Of course, a drying rack is another really good option. That is the large white apparatus you're seeing here. They come in hundreds of different designs, different styles, heights, widths, whatever you can think of. There's probably a drying rack on the market for it. These are really handy, especially if you have a little bit of space, if you need to utilize some vertical space that you have, or if you have perhaps only a little narrow hallway or something like that for you to place your pads, if you need to dry them in your kitchen, things like that. These are very versatile and can be customized. I do like to put mine in this little V configuration that you see here because I can utilize the most space to dry my pads. But if you look, there is probably a drying rack out there that will fit you perfectly. Another option for you is a clothes hanger with clips. I have one here. I don't use these and I have no idea where it came from. But those are a really good option. If you are like me and you don't have these, then you can just use your typical clothes hanger with some clothes pins and do the exact same thing. So you could snap the wings of your pads together, make a pad chain and hang them from that. Also a really great travel option, especially if you're staying in a hotel or perhaps someone's home, they'll probably have a clothes hanger available for you to borrow. Just as a note that when you are drying your pads by snapping them together and making a pad chain, be aware that you want to put the heavier pads on top and the lighter pads on bottom because putting the heavier pads on the bottom will cause more wear and tear on your wings. It can stretch them out and warp them. So by putting them with the heavier pads on top, you reduce that wear and tear on your pads. If you are someone who has a line to dry, you can always do that. I know it's not legal in some places or some people don't have access to it, but if you do, several people love that option. It's also really good for stains. Some people like to sun their pads and they think that that is a really good stain treatment option for them. My personal favorite way to dry my pads is to lay them on my bed with a fan facing them. Sometimes I will lay my drying rack here out flat on top of my bed and then put my pads over the rungs so that way they dry a little bit better because they can get air underneath them. Another option I have tried is to take the cover off of my ironing board and then from there I will lay my pads on top of that. Typically your ironing board will have holes or slats or something like that so that air can get on all sides of your pad and dry them. Just be aware that if your ironing board is metal, putting wet pads on your metal ironing board might cause rust. 
These are probably just a few cloth pad drying options that are available to you. They're just the ones that I could think of, the ones that I have utilized. However, this is not an extensive list of drying options. Of course, you should always care for your cloth pad via the recommended method of the maker. If you are the maker of your pads, then you have been responsible for prepping your fabrics and then you will best know how to care for them. Caring for your pads well and making sure that they are maintained properly is the best way to get the most use and life out of your pads as you possibly can. So whatever method you decide, make sure you weigh the pros and the cons of doing that. Another note that I really do want to stress is that you always want to dry and store your cloth pads in a way that is going to allow airflow. By closing your pads up, whether you are storing them between your periods or whether you are drying them, it's just going to be a breeding ground for mold. You could possibly get mold or mildew in your pads if you are storing or drying them in a closed area, such as a box, a cupboard, a cabinet, or a closet. Making sure that your pads are dried in an open area and then stored in a storage bin that has proper ventilation is going to help with preventing mold as trying to get mold and mildew out of pads is very, very difficult. Of course, I am not an expert on anything. I do not claim to be an expert on anything. I am simply just giving you the options that you have available to you, perhaps some ideas that you can utilize your space, especially if you're someone who has very little space. But I do not claim at all to know everything that there is about cloth pads. These are just simply my tidbits and my advice that I'm passing along to you. So I hope that you found this video helpful. I definitely enjoyed having you spend a little bit of time with me today. I would absolutely adore if you would hit that subscribe button down below and join our little family that we're growing. As well as that, while you're down there, if you would hit that like button, it just helps for YouTube to suggest this video to someone who might need it. Perhaps someone who's new to cloth pads and they don't have any idea where to start. As always, I am open to any comments that you might have, any video suggestions, anything that you might need to know, any questions, you can leave those in the comments down below. Or if it's something a little more private, you can message it here on YouTube to me, or you can send it to me on Instagram. My Instagram is always linked in the description box below. Again, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me today. I definitely appreciate it, and you enjoy the rest of your day, okay?